Hello, and welcome to Standing Strong for Marriages. Thanks for stopping by. For marriages, great to have you. If you're new to the channel, this is a channel basically has a lot of re- resources for families. Our primary goal is to help couples stay married or to restore their marriages. We know that this has a lot of impacts on people's lives, children. We use a lot of Christian resources, and so we know that has a big impact on how people perceive Christians and what we claim to believe as our faith. So we're hoping, because we really believe we're following God, uh, when we look at things like love and forgiveness, long-suffering, mercy, grace, these are kind of cornerstones of uh, the Christian faith. And so that's one of the things we do. We've also been looking at some other things um, related to health, related to some of the massive changes in society that have to do with, say, uh, restrictions on freedom, other, um, you know, treatments that are available. So, you know, we look at a bunch of different things. Today, I'm going to be looking at a great resource from uh, Sharon Fitzhenry, uh, Covenant Marriage and Betrothal Divorce. So I like this topic. It's a very technically difficult topic and one that can honestly wear you out. So if you're going through a divorce and you're a Christian person, you're trying to figure out what does God want me to do, there's going to be a lot of voices, complex, uh, things. In fact, I had something really great come through. Um, I asked for some help from a translator, person who works in that side of things. They gave me some great responses, but this is ma- that's something we'll maybe get through later. So Sharon put together a great resource. It's a 119 page PDF. I put it on Standing Strong for Marriages, our Facebook group, but she also is an admin for one called Covenant Marriage and betrothal divorce. So if you're on Facebook, uh, you can go on there. If you want to create a burner account or, you know, whatever, um, you can create a fake profile if you're worried about some of the um, stuff along with that. So a resource for Matthew 5:32 and 19:9, And these are the big verses in Matthew that talk about um, what happens if you divorce or remarry, right? So Sharon Lee Fitzhenry, and you can find her on Facebook. She goes by, I think, uh, same name, Sharon Fitzhenry. Uh, so take out the the middle Lee, just sharing it, first and last name if you want to find her. So what this basically is, is a, she has done a lot of work basically trying to uh, put forward some ideas about what did it really mean related to, and I haven't read this whole thing. I mean, it's 119 pages, and so I am going to look at it. But since I found it now, I want to share it and get it out for you all. It came out August 28th, 2021. Okay, so the table of contents, I want to look at this, but one of the big things that I feel like I've seen Sharon doing in a lot of her posts lately has been trying to ask this question, what is this quote-unquote term, which is often translated in English as like sexual immorality or fornication or something like this? Some people say, oh, it means adultery, and a lot of what Sharon has been posting recently, and I'm guessing that's what some of this research is going to say, is looking at, um, is this related to prostitution? So Sharon has done a bunch of research Covenant marriage, covenant or contract, case for indissolubility, looking at a lot of just biblical verses, adultery, unfaithfulness to a covenant. So looking at a lot of these, you know, quote unquote, um, problematic or controversial ideas, you know, um, are we dealing with a covenant here? Um, What does it mean, you know, if, uh, you know, a person has a new marriage, is that new marriage legitimate? Why does the Bible call it a new marriage? You know, marry someone else. Why would it use that? Why wouldn't it use something often people say? Why wouldn't it use like fallaciously get into a fake marriage or, you know, take a false wife or false husband, right? Why isn't it? And sometimes there are translations that do that. I think the basic English version, I'll get to that in an upcoming video when I go through some of the stuff that I, um, a back and forth I went through with um, a great person. But anyway, Jewish betrothal, that's always a big one because a lot of people are into the betrothal camp, right? That uh, there's some special thing of close to marriage and like promised wives versus real wives. So if you're a betrothed wife, you're betrothed to be married, right? And so what what did maybe, was there a special meaning that we need to unlock if we're going to understand Matthew's gospel to a Jewish audience who already held this kind of Jewish betrothal ceremony and how that doesn't make sense to us as, as outsiders, right? As Gentiles, we might not really understand, you know, how close to marriage that was. And then what are the implications? So she's going to take us into some of that. Excellent. Public procession and the wedding, something I've, I've thought about recently. Hey, why is it that when you go to a wedding, at least I did, and every wedding I've ever been to, have always come away with the sense that this is for life, right? 
till death do us part. Was that just some like mumbo jumbo that somebody made up along the way to try to up the romantic sense of the whole thing? Or is that really what marriage is? I mean, hopefully she'll help us look into that. The accusations so of the law of fornication, harlots, brides playing the harlot, you know, I don't know. I, I wonder if she's going to actually get into things like, not TikTok, but what's that thing that so many people are, like fans only or whatever that is. Um, if, you know, that's going to be considered part of it or just the the Western lifestyle, right, of just like years of sexual promiscuity and then getting married, right, and expecting to stay uh, faithful to that spouse until maybe you divorce them and then faithful to the next spouse until that one falls apart. And then, you know, that's kind of the culture that I'm I'm from in, in America. So um, I'm sure she's going to get into all this. New Testament, except for fornication, she's going to work that exception clause a little bit and really look at pornea. She went to all these universities, seminaries, found these ancient texts. She said she was going through uh, microfiles and, and all kinds of research that she tried to do. I mean, obviously, obviously. So I love it, like it. Just anybody who does this level of work, I think is great. So adulterer, adultery, pornea. What does this term mean? Pornea is the Greek word. So pornea is the Greek word. It's often uh, argued over. Prostitutes, patrons, pimps, covenant wife. It's going to be interesting. I mean, I've never really seen anything like this. Hebrew, I've never heard for Zana. So some new interesting stuff here. Latin and English dictionaries, Bible translations compared, Greek lexicons. And I've been seeing a lot of posts from her about all these lexicons. It's like, you know, where, where is this person coming up with this stuff? Not that it's legitimate. It's just more like who has gone that deep? I should say one thing. I first came across Sharon early in my stand, uh, right when I started kind of I mean, I put my ring back on. I've been standing for a few years, but then at about 2018, I started the YouTube channel for this because I thought, I don't know everything, but I'm fairly convinced that I'm on the right side of this and we need to get the word out because this is a big scandal that uh, no, one, no one talks about this, that there's all these divorces. I can't believe when I found the numbers, I was like, I can't believe it. But Sharon was one of the first people to kind of, I mean, took it to a new level for me. She uh, gave a, probably related to Rejoice Marriage Ministries, she gave a testimony in uh, Pompano Beach, I think is where they are, in Florida. And it was basically about how she left a marriage, so divorce to repent. She was the first person I ever came across who had actually, I'd never even heard of anybody doing that or thinking that that would be a reasonable thing to do. And then I had stumbled upon her testimony about that's what she decided to do because she felt like she was an adulterous, sinful second marriage, or maybe it was a third marriage. I don't remember. But I was like, what in the world is this lady talking about? I mean, because I had never heard anybody talk about it. And one of the reasons I continue to do this channel, even though it's we've had problems in, um, with like uh, monetization and stuff like that, is just... I, I feel like this is kind of earth shattering and something that you can't find in almost any church anywhere. So uh, she's going to take us through the Greek lexicons from the first century, all through the dark ages, middle ages, deep dive into lexical citations, Strong's Concordance, Bible Hub, Vine, divorce analysis and application, remarriage analysis and application, faithful contemporary leaders from the permanence view, marriage repentance or remarriage repentance, Repentance from the book of Ezra, which is an important one. You should at least know that if you haven't gotten even through some of these low-hanging fruit pieces, just go read the book of Ezra, and that'll help get you at least on board with the idea that marriage can be sinful and something that should be repented of and divorce under certain circumstances is the right way to go. She finishes off with some conclusions, gives us our references, and helps us to go to our own study. So, um, like I said, you can find her, again, the channel or Facebook group, I should say, Covenant Marriage and Betrothal Divorce. It's about 700 groups. It's public, so you can you can join easily. Um, and then, yeah, you can get the PDF. You can find it there. You can find it on Staying Strong for Marriages. It's something she made for us for free, and uh, so obviously she's really, really, I mean, could you imagine doing this amount of work? I mean, either what, you're A, terribly bored, or B, you're extremely concerned and feeling like this really needs to be shared, and, and you're probably very full of love. You feel like I'm concerned for my fellow man or woman, concerned for the church, concerned for what God is trying to do, his message, and so obviously she believes like there's some huge missing pieces so there you go. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll talk to you in the next one.